Ladies and gentlemen, hello again, and welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham, this is X-Plane, and the brand new Hot Start Challenger 650 that launched a few days ago. This is part one of a video series looking at the flight preparation, the initial power-up, and we'll do some aircraft memorization as well, how to operate the doors, we'll have a look at the avionics and see some of the common features that you find on all aircraft and where they are in the Challenger avionics. Before we do that though, a very quick disclaimer. I've been involved in the beta testing program for this aircraft for about nine months or so. I've flown it for hundreds of hours, but I haven't paid any money for the product that you see in front of you. I'm not trying to sell you the product and I'm not trying to promote the product. My intention is to show you the aircraft so you can decide if it's the right product for you. And uh, if it is the product for you, to teach you how to operate the aircraft in the manner that we've been taught how to operate it by the subject matter experts and consultants that have been working with the Hot Start team. Now, if you've seen any of the promotional material for this aircraft, or indeed if you've got it, you know that you don't start off in the flight deck like most aircraft, but rather you start off in the FBO. Let's turn around, we'll just walk away from the aircraft and into the FBO. Now, the reason for the FBO is to get away from things like the EFB that have become so common in flight simulation models. If you work for an airline, you would brief in the operations room, or if you work for a corporate operator, you could brief at the FBO. The FBO deals with the fueling requests, any towing requirements that you have, and any flight planning, flight filing, things that you need to do. We've got this GNOME rotary engine here with the little information plaque. We click the button and we can even animate it. And it's just a lovely showpiece inside the FBO. It's almost like they're, the developers are showing how much detail you can put into the sim on frivolous things without any real impact on the performance with X-Plane, if you know what you're doing. We'll walk up to the desk and we'll click the desktop here to make a ground handling Welcome request. Hot start flight support. How can we help you today? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tail number in, we're GK, in this case, Kilo Alpha Tango Echo. I'm going to tell it my estimated time of departure. I'll say 1500 Zulu. There's two crew. I'm expecting four passengers. I don't really know how much fuel is on the aircraft, so I'll leave the fuel order blank at the moment. And uh, I don't need to know about uh, GPU or air start units. We'll use the APU on the aircraft. It's outside, it doesn't need towed, and it's a lovely day here. We'll look at all of these features in later videos. So all I'm going to do is put my signature on the box here, on the, the course, line here. Captain. I'll get that organized for you right away. And we'll walk outside. If you need to do your flight planning in SimBrief or whichever other uh, briefing tools you use, you can enter the flight planning room here. You can sit down at the desk and you can open up your browser window while cl clicking onto the computer. Just another feature to keep you in the simulator as much as possible. Let's walk out the aircraft. And here's this lovely 3D model of the Challenger. When I first started testing the model, I didn't really know much about the Challenger. And I always thought it was a, a fat little airplane, a fairly ugly looking jet. But having spent all this time with it, I've completely changed my opinion on it. I really love the look of it. Its uh, fuselage is uh, shapely. It's, it's just a powerful little airplane, and it's just a joy to operate and fly in the simulator. Let's get the doors open and we'll walk up to it here. Listen to the sound effects as we open the door. I'm going to push the button here to release the door latch. You can see the pressurization flap. I'll turn the handle, the depressurization flap, stand to the side and open the door. That's just a mouse drag. And you can see that I've got a walk mode to walk around the aircraft. That's part of the product. That's not another um, plugin that's doing that. So when you stand up close to the aircraft, you can get a feel for how big it is. It's simulating somebody that's around about five foot 10. And you're basically eye line at the door there. So it's not a small airplane. It's way bigger than a Citation, way bigger than a Phenom. We'll take the covers off. That's an Alpha probe there, Pito probe, another Pito probe, and a rotary ice detector. And on the other side, another pitot probe. Uh, we'll take off the ice detector on that side and the alpha probe. 
These are temperature probes that are temperature probe here and another alpha probe there that don't have covers. Whilst we're on the outside, this is the release version of the product. It's only been out for about four days or so. Looking at the support forums, people have been having problems with the APU faulting, and that's because they're not shutting the APU down correctly. You've got to stop the APU before you switch off the aircraft batteries. If you get a fault on the APU, you open this panel here with these click spots, and then just drag the panel open. And you can see the APU fault reset is here. So reset here, and there's the hours counter for the APU. Make sure we close the panel up. Now there's other panels that are simulated on the outside. Not all of them are functional at the moment. The developers are working to introduce more features to the aircraft throughout the lifespan of it. But we've got the DC power hook up there. DC is used for the, uh, basically to charge the APU battery more than anything else. Walk around the wing here. And as we walk up to the front, we've got two access panels here. We've got the fueling port and the fueling control panel. If I open the fueling control panel with the catches here and then lift the flap, I can click this button here to swing it out. And this is the refueling control panel on the outside. Modeled in exquisite detail, you've got the grounding wire here. It's all nice and clear. It, it's, it's a beautifully modeled aircraft throughout. All we're going to do here is check that that's set to off. We don't typically use this panel because it's a replacement panel or a, an equivalent panel in the flight deck that's got some digital indicators as well. So just make sure that's selected off, store it, and then we'll close the hatch and close the latches. This is the refueling port in here. You can see that as well. And uh, at the front, we've got auction servicing and AC hookup. With that, let's walk on board the aircraft. Now I'll show you how to operate the door as well. You've seen how to open the door. Closing the door is a little bit more involved. We come on to the inside. We've got this assist handle here, it's called. We just grab the assist handle and hold it. The door closes. On this side, we close the lever that latches the door. And then what we do is open this cover, pull the T handle and close that cover. And that retracts the exterior handle. That's the door secure for flight now. To open the door, it's simply a case. You don't have to worry about the handle. To open it, all we do is pull the big lever there and then push the door away from us and let go. And the door goes down. It, very straightforward as long as you stick to the to those steps. We'll walk forward and we'll get in the seat here. And this is the Challenger 650. There's that refueling panel up there I mentioned about before. So what we've got to do is put the initial power on the aircraft. Once the power is on, we've got a checklist on the MFD, but until then, we're going to use the tablet here. I'll go into the aircraft documentation, and I'll just show you the file here. In the aircraft documentation, we've got checklist printable, and then on the very first page, we've got flight compartment safety check and flight compartment checklist. Once we get the APU gen on, flight compartment checklist step six, we can transfer over to the uh, MFD. So it's circuit breakers and the main disconnect. Let's make sure the circuit breakers are all in place. You can see them all here. These are all functional. Let me get my eye point moving the right way. All these circuit breakers are functional on the aircraft and they all do what they're supposed to do. It's got a fully simulated electrical system. So make sure all those circuit breakers are in by looking along the panel. Same on this side here. And this breaker panel is down by the left hand pilot and down by the right hand pilot make sure they're all all in now while you're standing here you may think well the the control column on the left hand side is tiny compared to the one on the left you can't hide the control columns but what you can do is shrink this one down into the floor a little bit so that when you're sitting here in the simulator it's not quite as intrusive that's just to make it a little bit uh, easier to see the displays it's important to use the trim functions on the control column for part of the, pre uh, the the setup checks. So it's good to always have the control column in view. Excellent. The overhead switches, we're going to make sure they're off. It's really talking about the hydraulic switches here, the light switches here, the electric switches here, and then anything else, just making sure that the, 
switches are all set in the out position, except the AC-DC utility switch, which should be pushed in. Done that, we'll check the nose wheel steering, make sure that's selected off, it's down here, nose wheel steering is off. The landing gear lever position, that's down. The flight spoilers, we're making sure they're retracted, that's this lever here, like a big handbrake or an emergency brake in a car, make sure it's fully forward. The flap lever position, we're going to make sure that's set to the position they were on the ground. So there's the flap lever there, it's set to zero, which is where they need to be. Landing gear manual release is stowed. The landing gear manual release is down here. Make sure that it's stowed so it's pushed fully down. The ADG manual release and the ADG lamp test. So the ADG manual release, this is like the, the ram air turbine on this aircraft, make sure it's covered and we'll hold the switch to lamp and make sure the green light comes on and that will come on even without the battery. That's basically telling you that the main battery is connected. At the moment, the battery connectors, you can see them on ground services, APU, main battery connection, uh, sorry, APU battery connection and main battery connection. So make sure that the battery's all on, batteries are connected, the ADG lamp test is carried out, logbook, safety equipment, external check, that's all done. We move on to the flight compartment checklist and we'll get it powered up. So battery master goes to on. It's up here and the initial power up, we're going to hop around across the panels a little bit. But once we get into the flow of the main check, it will be a fairly normal conventional scan th uh, flow through the avionics. So battery master comes on. On battery, all we've got is the pilot's MFD. But what we can do is click on it and pop it out to a 2D pop up here. And I find this very useful uh, because it lets you keep it on screen as you're working through some of the checks. We can also pop up these panels here and these are going to be important, the DCP and the CCP. I'm just going to grab the edge of the DCP, make it a little bit smaller so it fits in the space here. And I'll also pop up the CDU because that will become useful later. So I've got these 2D overlays at the left hand side of my screen and the center area here to work with. And that's simply because in the real thing, it's very easy to hold the checklist in your hand, uh, very easy to look at one thing while you do something else. It's not so easy in the sim. So having the MFD popped up here is really useful. Battery master is on, and then it says battery volts, minimum 22 volts DC. So we've got these buttons down here that are very like the uh, synoptic page buttons on the Airbus. We'll push DC elect, we'll get 25 volts, and 25 volts on the batteries, that's fine. The FireX monitors, they're down here on the center. All we do is click the, the click spot between the FireX monitors here, one and two for the bottle, and make sure that we get right squib one and two, left squib one and two, that's fine. The APU bottle, make sure we get APU squib one and two, and the fire detection, go for warning, Jet pipe, overheat. Jet pipe, overheat. That's fine. And then go to fail. Make sure we get the fail messages on the cast display. This is the cast display on the MFD. So FireX monitor is checked. And then it's just a case of APU start and avail. And then the APU gen on. So this should be very straightforward from now on. Very familiar with uh, other aircraft. On the overhead panel, APU power fuel. Push that in and see the APU indications come on here. Bombardier described these as switch lights. They're not quite as logical on the Airbus. You get some abnormalities like this one here, only lighting up when there's a, a fault and the colors aren't quite as consistent as what they are on the Airbus. The in-out state matters quite a bit on these switches. So push this power fuel switch in and then start on the APU. See the APU spinning up. While the APU is coming on, We'll walk outside, walk around the other side of the aircraft. Obviously don't do this in real life. You should be able to see the heat effect from the APU as well as it fires up. There's the APU exhaust on the side here and you can see the, the heat effect coming out the side of it. 
very nicely modelled and very immersive, this aircraft. I tend to focus a lot on the systems on the aircraft. Um, I like having a nice visual model. I don't really have an eye for visual detail, but this aircraft is, uh, is certainly, in my opinion, very nicely modelled. So APU's on. If I bring those MFDs back again, or the MFD back, you can see APU's at 100% and the message here is APU Gen off. But with that, we come up here, we put APU Gen on. You see the AC bus is powered. The DC bus is powered. And the systems are all coming to life. I've got a key binding called toggle uh, 3D pop-ups or toggle pop-up panels. I've got that in my space bar so that if I need more space on my screen, I can do that. I've only got a 1080p screen run, uh, running at 23 inches and it's, um, it needs a little bit of space. I need, you need a little bit more desktop space uh, in some cases. That's where having these toggles uh, to toggle the displays on and off is really helpful. So what I'm interested in now is how much fuel the aircraft had on board. It's got about 2.7 tonnes, which is not really going to be enough to fly a transatlantic mission. I'll get my flight plan from here. I'll look at the uh, charts. I've got it loaded in here, and it says that I need uh, 8.2 tonnes. This is a kilogram aircraft. So I didn't fill in the ground handling request for fuel. How are we going to get the fuel on board the aircraft? Well, I'm going to push this button on this cell phone here. Call hot start. Hot start flight support. Jenny speaking. How can we help? Yeah, I'd like to request uh, refueling, please, Jenny. Of course. I'll have that over with you in a minute or two. Anything else? No, that's great. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Take care. Excellent. So Jenny's going to send the fuel truck over, and we're going to uh, fuel the aircraft up. While Jenny's sending the truck over, we need to have a think about how much fuel we want. The fueler is going to pump the amount of litres in that I want. He doesn't care how much fuel is in the aircraft already. All that he cares about is what I ask them to pump. So with that in mind, I need to do some calculations. It's very straightforward. I'm going to take this value here, 8139, and subtract this value here, 2740. Now I'll do that in my calculator app. You may not be able to see this uh, on the stream or on the recording, but uh, 8139, subtract 2740 means that I need, well, let's call it 5,400 kilograms. Once the fuel is here, we'll keep 5,400 kilograms in mind. I said I wanted to show you some features that uh, pilots might need to become familiar with this aircraft. So let's pop up those two displays and I'll make the PFD and the MFD a little bit bigger just now because this is what we're going to be looking at. I'll also get rid of the CDU and I'll make my DCP a little bit bigger as well here. Now having these as 2D pop-ups, as I said, it's very useful when you're flying the aircraft. Even if you're flying with just the DCP and the CCP down here, uh, it's, it's just really, it's useful for getting uh, heads up use of the aircraft here. I think the fueler might be here. So you'll notice that I've got hectopascals at the moment. If I want to make that inches of mercury, I click menu. It brings up the PFD menu here. Use the, the outer dial here, the menu advance, to scroll down the config, push select, and then I can change the pressure setting from uh, hectopascals to inches. I can change the flight director from a cross pointer to a V bar. You can see the symbology changes. So I prefer, uh, today I'll have the cross pointer. What I'd recommend is just use one of them, get familiar with it, and then you're good to go. I can back out of the menu. And it's really the same on the PFD as well. We've got the synoptics. There's the uh, lower menu here, lower format, changes between the display modes. A lower menu gives you the same sort of capabilities as you saw on the PFD. Now those are replicated on the other side as well. The aircraft has got MFD over here, PFD, and it's got two sets of uh, two DCPs and two CCPs. So it can be a bit intimidating to begin with down here, but what I recommend is just spend a few minutes learning your way through the menus on these systems. One of the common things that 
uh, people don't understand about the Challenger avionics, you must always have the eye right, cast display. Fuel truck is hooked up. Just let me know how much fuel you need. Or ah. would you like to go tanks full today? Let's deal with the fueling just now. So I want, uh, I want, oh, he's going to ask me for liters. So I know that I want 5,400 kilograms, but he's telling me he's going to pump in liters. So how does that work out? Well, here's the specific weight today. Kilograms per liter. So I take my 5,400 and I divide that by 0.813 and the answer is 6,640 litres. You know what, I'm just going to set 6.7, so I'll drag this up to about 6.7 and I'll say pump to this many litres. Right. Go you hear him go down the stairs? But of course, that's not the end of the story. We've got to set up the refueling panel in the aircraft as well because that's a pilot function typically on these aircraft. I'll put the fueling switch to on, or the, the switch to fuel, and then what I'll do is I'll open the left main and the right main tanks, and I'll do a shut off test. So make sure the high level lights come on and the valves go to closed, and then release it. We've got open and open, and fuel will start flowing in. By convention on the Challenger, they will fill the main wing tanks first. And then once those tanks are verified full, then they'll go back and do the tail and the ox tanks. We'll let the main tanks fill up first of all. Excellent. So we were looking at the uh, MFD and the PFD and talking about the ICAS. The ICAS system here, it has to be displayed somewhere. You cannot hide it. If you want to use a full screen MFD, your ICAS has to be somewhere else. So if I pop up the uh, ICAS displays, or the uh, MFD displays, sorry, here's the left and the right, you see that if I come down here, I can move the ICAS to the right display, or the left display. I can also, if I close this uh, window here, and close this window here, move them down a little bit, and bring this one up, you can see that I can actually go to a reversionary mode with both PFDs showing the ICAS information and that gives me two full screen PFDs to work with. It doesn't really matter what you do with it as long as you develop a method of working that works for you. Other stuff of interest on these displays uh, is the NAV pre-select. This has caused some issues over the first few days of the launch of the product. I'm going to change my format. I'll click format here. Key pause is a map essentially and rows are the needles. And you've got the same functions on both of the displays. I can change the lower format here between P-Pause and Plan. Okay, what I want is to have P-Pause, typically the map, the line to follow on the MFD and the rows or the needles on the PFD. And you do that just by pushing Format until you get rows. You'll notice that the needles are magenta. The main CDI is magenta here because it's FMS nav. My preset nav here is VOR1. So if I swap nav source, I click that button here, it brings the preset nav into the rose mode, and I've got green needles now. Okay, and once it's in green needles, I've got the barrow setting. Up here, obviously, I've got the course indicator, of course, pointer, that I can change. Nav source again swaps it back to the preselect, and people have got themselves confused by having something like I don't know, FMS3 nav source, and then F VOR2, and they're pushing nav source back and forth, trying to get it back to how they had it. It's simply a case of making sure that your preset nav is set correctly. So preset nav, FMS1, nav source, and you get it back. It's very common to have FMS1 and VOR1 there, and on the first officer's side, FMS2, and VOR2. If you want to change the course and the frequency for the pre-select, just move the highlight box down and spin the inside knob as you would. The frequency, you can get it on the MFD up here, but you can get it on the CDU here. But that's a story for another day. So just keep an eye on this fueling. You see that he's nearly done. In fact, we've actually got a high level, so the fueling stopped at the moment. 
Although the fueling stopped, you'll see the fuel level is still going up. I want to show you the study menu on this aircraft. If I go to study, and then I go to engines, fuel system, it tells you everything you need to know about the fuel system, including the fuel levels. These fuel sensors, these fuel probes, are basically filtered to reduce the rate of change, so that if the aircraft's in turbulence, you don't have the fuel tanks uh, figures sloshing around. The pump stopped too early, Captain. Do you need more fuel? Yes, continue pumping, please. All right, I'm going to go start up the pump. So he's going to go start the pump. I'm going to switch off the wing tanks. I'm going to open the tail and the ox. Now, tail and ox must always be open together. You notice that one's open and this one's closed. And we'll talk about that in a second. Once the pump starts, you should see this one change from closed to open. If it doesn't start, there we go. So what's happening here is the tail valves, I'll bring up the study menu again so you can understand the, the fuel system because it's important for this aircraft. Looking at the transfer system, the tail tank here, the tail system, it's got two valves, one on either side of what they call the rotor burst zone. These valves here are controlled by uh, electric servos, whereas all the other fueling valves are controlled by fuel pressure. So as soon as I switched this one open, you saw the valves open straight away. This one didn't open until there's fuel pressure applied by the fuel truck. That's very common, but it will time out. If you open these valves too early, they will automatically snap closed again and you have to reset the panel. So when the fueler leaves the aircraft, just give them a few seconds to get down the stairs to turn the pump on and then flick the switches. I hope that makes sense. So we've looked at the uh, information on the PFD. We've looked at the fueling system and how to get the aircraft uh, ready to go, uh, ready to go initially. All we've got to do now is to run through the cockpit checks. You can see they're all available on the MFD here. I can simply use the checklist function. I can bind the button to that and say checklist item and we'll have the virtual first officer read the checks to us. But we'll pick that up in the next video. I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks very much.